I'm Jerusha Sukthio Rath. I'm the managing and multimedia editor for News24. And I have just sent IT the weirdest email. I've had to explain to IT that um, a couple of our reporters have had to access a porn site from the office. I've begged them to not revoke their network access. And I've explained that truly, genuinely, it's all for the job. And that's because the latest news in the Bishop's sex scandal, and that's the story we're talking about this week, we'll, we'll get into it just now. Um, the latest story shows that explicit videos of a Bishop's teacher has been uploaded onto popular porn sites. We obviously had to check out if that was the case. You're listening to The Story. It's a new podcast from News24. Every week, we're going to take you inside our newsroom. We'll speak to journalists and experts about the week's biggest story. This is what we saw, heard, and uncovered this week. But I first want to touch on the Bishop's school teacher. So it's insane. Um, She would, so she is a 12 out of 10, like, like she's a model. And like when we were at school, she was the water polo coach and her dad also um, coaches there. It's Nick Mallet's like niece. But it is crazy because she's the most innocent, nicest, like shy, good girl ever. Like this is absolutely rocked Cape Town. It's the it's the juiciest um, gossip um, like in years because she is completely the opposite of the kind of person who would do this kind of thing. Well, there you have it, the juiciest gossip in years and the scandal that's apparently rocking Cape Town. Um, I'm sitting here in Joburg with News 24's Rian Hrobler. Rian, you were the News 24 news editor at the time we broke this story. And what a story it is. Yeah, it's it's not something that you that you see every day. Um, you know, it, it in, in some circles it's been described as every schoolboy's fantasy. Mm. But then on the other hand, one has to consider that you are that you're dealing with uh, an adult, uh, an adult who uh, had a sexual relationship or allegedly had a sexual relationship with uh, with a, a, a school pupil. Um, the story was broken by by Times Live and came to my attention on Saturday. At that time, the teacher wasn't named, but the school had issued a statement saying that uh, these allegations had come to light and that uh, bishops uh, in, in Rotterbosch and Cape Town uh, was investigating these, but that the teacher had resigned with immediate effect. So at that time, that was really... Uh, all the information that we had. We knew that she was a water polo coach and we knew that she had been a beauty model and had featured in a a beauty magazine. Uh, But on Sunday morning, um, the Sunday Times, as well as Rapport, um, named the teacher. Now, one has to pause here for a while and just consider um, when do we name uh, people who are involved in cases of a sexual nature and when do we not. in this case, uh, the, the the pupil involved, and subsequently the other pupils that uh, that that were involved in in alleged sexual relations uh, with the uh, with the teacher, um, none of them are underaged. It's not a crime, in other in in other words. Um, so that's the one one reason why she 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 could have been named, and it turned out to be Fiona Viotti, who's uh, thirty. Uh, she's been married for just over a year, and she happens to be the daughter of uh, one of the uh, teachers at the school. Uh, Dave Mallet, he coaches the uh, the first rugby team, and he's also a, a history teacher. And she was involved with the uh, with the uh, water polo team. But it appears that this is something that's been going on for um, for more than a year, at least a few years, and involves quite a few pupils allegedly. My goodness! Now, there's something very specific about bishops in Cape Town. It's in like this absolutely beautiful leafy Rondebosch suburb, and. Um, We've heard that some of the students, I don't know how true this is, but uh, are frequently ferried around the Western Cape on helicopters, rich, rich parents, tuition costs a fortune. This is not your bog standard high school, right, Rian? No, it's not. I mean, this is this is not your normal suburban high school. Um, if, if, if you send your child to, to, um, to bishops and they board there, that could cost you two, in, in, the, in the region of 260,000 rand a year. That breaks down to about 27,000 rand a month. Just over 700 boys that go there. It's an all-boys school as well. 
And there's been so much bravado around this case, you know, like we heard in that voice note. But actually, Rian, this is a story about power and abuse, not about uh, matric people who got super lucky. Well, these allegations are very, very serious. And um, I've seen a lot of comment online uh, where you have a sort of a, a very typical high-fiving going on. Um, you know, yeah, that's a, a good a, way of putting it. A boys' club uh, mm. approach where people have, have, have stated online, um, why could it not, not have been me? Or why did teachers not, uh, were, were teachers not as attractive when I was at school? It's not a simple case of going on a date and holding hands. Um, having sex with, uh, with the school people when you are a teacher is a very, very serious uh, indiscretion, uh, if I can use that word, which uh, is a, a very euphemistic way of looking at it. So, Rian, where are we with this story? I suppose we can't call it a case. There are no criminal proceedings. Nothing's going to come you know, before a court but the school's investigating, the principal's been releasing updates, and even um, Fiona's dad her, himself has, has released a, an update that's actually come under criticism too. Uh, what, what did he call it? Business as usual. That's right, lads. business as usual. Um, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's such a difficult case to handle from a public relations point of view. He is a prominent member of staff at the school, and I think he issued his letter to uh, to, to parents in good faith. Um, he wanted uh, to thank them for the messages of support that, that they'd received. Uh, he called the, the events devastating, uh, not only for his daughter, but for the family as a whole. Um, and he said that tough times were ahead and uh, that he would be soldiering on and supporting his family as best he can. He, he asked the, uh, the the boys there not to tiptoe around him, mm-hmm. but rather to try to adopt a, a business-as-usual approach. From from the point of view of him being a father, he said that Fiona's health and safety are their priority right now and that they will be doing all they can to help uh, her pull through this. I didn't mention the, uh, the boy at all no. uh, in his letter, though. Look, I didn't think we were going to hear the name Mallet outside of the Rugby World Cup. And here we have it. Yes, um, here we have why it. Why is this significant? The mallet connection. Yeah. Well, it's. Uh, I think it's more of a juicy tidbit than 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 having any real rel- relevance mm. in terms of uh, this this specific incident itself. She happens to be the daughter of Dave Mallet, who happens to be the brother of Nick Mallet. But of course, in journalism and especially in online journalism, it's um, it, it always makes the story more interesting if you can attach it to to a, a famous or well known family member. In this case, it happened to be Nick Mallet, although one must emphasize that, that Nick Mallet himself has nothing to do with this case. He just happens to be related to this uh, to, to Fiona Viotti. Uh, and some very interesting opinions about that. Um, you know, is it, uh, is it fair to name Nick Mallet, for example? And when they want us to look at the press code when it comes to that, and some of the questions that need to be asked are, did, did you in any way unnecessarily involve in a news report a family member or members of an accused or convicted party by, for example, referring to the accused or convicted convicted party's family relationship to a well-known person? And is it really necessary to mention the name of the well-known family member in relation to the accused or guilty party? And the test will be, does the well-known family member have anything to do with the case of the accused or the guilty party? And does mentioning his or her name place any perspective on the fact of the case of the accused or guilty party? Or can the story stand on its own legs without mentioning the well-known family member? And in this case, it really doesn't. It's not necessary to mention Nick, but unfortunately, it happened. It's pretty cut and dry. I mean, he has nothing to do with it. He just happens to be related. Um... Yes, look... um, the, the Mallet family's uh, connection with bishops goes back a long, a long time. Not only is Dave a teacher there and has been for a number of years, but um, uh, Anthony Mallet, who is Nick and Dave's father, was the headmaster at the school from 1964 to 1982. So uh, at, some, at, at some point, the connection will have been made by, by a, a reasonable member of the public anyway. We also know that she's married. She's been married since September last year. She That's not a long time, Rian. You're pretty much a newlywed. Pretty much newlywed. They've been together for a long time. Right. Uh, it's uh, a chap called Pavel Viotti. They married in September last year. Um, but they have since been uh, separated, it is believed. Um, we're also not sure of their, their whereabouts. Uh, we have been told by the, uh, uh, by, by the lawyer that was appointed by the family, uh, William Booth, 
that uh, Fiona was still in the country and uh, still in the Cape Town area, so she's probably still with family, um, but we're not sure what happened to Pavel uh, and where where he f- uh, finds himself. Um, Sunday Times tried to to reach him at his home, uh, but he didn't appear to be there. No, and by all accounts, he's uh, enacted a bit of a social media blackout. He's nowhere to be found online, which you understand. Yes, of course. No, no. Uh, uh, when, when the story broke, immediately all the social media accounts went down. Right. Well, that's uh, News 24's Rian Krobler. Thank you so much for talking to us. And of course, it's an ongoing story, so um, you're going to be on top of it. We'll see what comes out of it. Yeah. Thanks, Rian. Thank you. Elizabeth Mamakos is the editor of Parent24. She's in our Cape Town office and we're in Joburg, so we're going to give her a call just to get her perspective on the Bishop's scandal. Hello. Hi Elizabeth, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. So this is the story that not only has been dominating headlines, but I mean it's been dominating dinner parties, brides, uh, everybody is speaking about it. So what's word on the street in Cape Town around the story? So Cape Town has responded with shock. You'll hear comments in the queue at Woolies or in your yoga class. It's it's everywhere. Um, I've had parents of students at school tell me how they immediately asked their boys if they'd heard the story, if they'd been contacted by the teacher themselves, and if they'd been victims themselves. I mean, you can imagine the shock and fear these parents would have felt. I can only imagine. Um, but actually, this is a story about abuse and about a very skewed power dynamic. Talk to us about that. All I can say is that Bishops is a prestigious school and parents think that their children are safe there. Um, the reality is our children are no more safe at any one school than at any, at any other. But the, the South African Council of Educators Code of Conduct is very clear. You know, a teacher must refrain from improper physical contact with learners. Um, and obviously, so obviously what the, the teacher did was wrong in this regard. Now, Elizabeth, obviously this case is a little bit different in that the young man isn't a minor, so um, that's why nothing's going to go to court. There are no criminal proceedings against this woman. But we've still been careful with how we've reported on it, um, not naming the young man specifically. Can you talk to us a bit about that? So he might be over 18, but the Criminal Procedure Act and the Child Care Act and the Media Law Handbook of Southern Africa all govern sort of the laws around how we report and an important issue to remember is that the law protects minors in court um, and in the media and even though this isn't currently a criminal case it could become a criminal case we don't know how old he was when this may have started and if there's other children involved Um, and there's a unicef document on children's rights and the media and it, it encourages journalists to cover children's issues in a way that are not sensational and that are accurate and at Parent24 and at News24, we just try and adhere to that. Of course, um, you're so right, because there could potentially be other kids implicated. In fact, um, the school seems to have implied that there are other cases, and those young men may well be minors. That's definitely a possibility, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so the ethics around that are, could become very complex. So um, I think it's better to keep his name out of the press. Yeah, absolutely. So from your perspective, from a parenting perspective, how do we equip our kids to be empowered to speak out when things like this are happening in our schools? The best thing to do is to communicate with your children. Just speak to them. Have an open line. Tell them that nothing is off limits. They can come to you with anything they need to speak about um, and encourage that. Just keep encouraging that. There's definitely no like one uh, kind of birds and the bees type of difficult conversation that you need to have it has to be an ongoing conversation it has to be just part of daily life your, your kids mustn't feel that you will be shocked or horrified by anything you might tell them so all the resources that any parent could potentially want is available on parent 24 they can just click onto your site and have a look there absolutely we have a wide range of topics that we cover thanks for chatting to us today elizabeth absolutely all right bye bye
The Story is a weekly podcast by News24, presented by me, Jerusha Sukthio Rath, and produced by Nokutula Manyati. For this story, this podcast, and more, visit news24.com.